If you are trying to figure out what a covered expatriate is and isn't and are terribly confused, there's good reason. So I'll explain it as quickly as I can. Think about it this way. If you relinquish your US citizenship or a long-term US resident who ceases to be a lawful permanent resident, in a way, by default, you are automatically a covered expatriate. Hi, I'm Anthony Parents of IRS Medic, and in this video, I'll explain what it means to be a covered expatriate, and I will also explain how not to be one. Additionally, I'll discuss a new IRS relief program for those who have expatriated incorrectly. So now, why is it bad to be a covered expatriate? If you are a covered expatriate, you are subject to the exit tax. Now, the exit tax sort of works like the federal estate tax. The concern Congress had is that prior to death, U.S. persons subject to the estate or death tax, as it has been referred to, could easily avoid it merely by expatriating, that is, giving up citizenship before death. So Congress, in such desperate need of your stuff, created the exit tax in large part as a way to frustrate taxpayers from circumventing the estate tax. So the thing is, the federal estate tax only starts to apply when you have a lot of assets, and so too does the exit tax. The difference is that the asset test for expatriating is lower, around $2 million compared to the estate and gift tax exemption, which is something you don't need to worry about until your assets go over $5 million. And also with the exit tax, there is an income test as well. The point is that for many middle class Americans who are covered expatriates, this means nothing to them as even if the tax were applied, they would owe nothing. Rather, the biggest downside for most people is that as a covered expatriate, the law could treat them as a U.S. person for tax purposes, years after they gave up their U.S. citizenship. That's right, just because you are no longer a U.S. citizen, that does not mean the IRS feels you should not be taxed. Pretty crazy, isn't it? So the problem is that the government at some point could try to claim you still owe taxes and be subjected to the horrific penalty regime of FBARS and the Foreign Account Tax Compliant Act, or FACA, well after you cease to be a U.S. person. So for many people, the real reason they don't want to be a covered expat is because they want finality. They don't want to have to wait and guess to see if the IRS is done with them. So now that you know what a covered expat is, let's talk about how not to be one. Number one, certify a Form 8854. This means you need to be in compliance with the IRS for the last five years. Now, before you run off and file the last five years, stop right there and get legal advice. You may not actually have to file the last five years. And also, you may want to use a disclosure program to reduce or eliminate massive penalty exposure. Follow the links to IRS Medic for more help. Number two, file and pay the exit tax if it applies. The assets over $2 million and income over around 161 could subject you to this, but this does not mean you have to pay. There are certainly ways to plan around this tax bite, and there are other exceptions. If you were born a dual national, you may not have to pay the exit tax even though you were a billionaire who did zero planning. Number three, and this is what's new, the IRS announced a program in September of 2019 called Relief Procedures for Certain Former Citizens. This is a way for certain kinds of U.S. expats, many so-called accidental Americans, to tame relief from being deemed a covered expatriate. Again, if you're struggling with these issues, head over to IRS Medic for more info. We have helped thousands and thousands of Americans and non-Americans resolve their IRS anxieties. Be sure to subscribe. We'll get into more of that U IRS's new expat relief program in future videos. Like and share this video if you found it helpful. Leave a comment if you wish. We read every one. This is Anthony Parents of IRS Medic, and I thank you for watching.